Kevin Wonderland. I just wanted to give you an update on what I was doing with the Skunk Project. I meant to get these things in a flower a month ago, and I ended up getting uh, unexpectedly ill and ended up in the ICU for a couple of days. So it kind of screwed my month up a little bit. But uh, I have the plants in small form that I'm ready to reintroduce. But I just figured while I had these vegged up in, in the greenhouse, I would just show what they look like. So I'm gonna cut them into some clone stock. But the thing is, this is what, this is what that, that 81 skunk look like. You know, beautiful body, natural. This is its natural branching. Uh, I clean the lowers up just so we get some more air flew through in the, in the greenhouse because it's, it's raining outside. But um, this is the natural pattern on it. Um, this right here is that the hog's breath cut. So this is the San Diego hog's breath. This is more out of the 88 era. And uh, Northern Lights, Williams Wonder skunk. And you can see a little bit more tighter, uh, I say a little more Af Afghanica, wide leaf frame, even though narrow leaf body, wide leaf frame. A little tighter inside, more umbrella-like. This one right here, you can see that the apical dominance is different, where these lowers will basically get up almost to the height of the, the apical cola, naturally. And that just means that the hormones that are being displaced from this apical meristem are not strong. It allows all these lower branches to really lift up. And it's an important consideration when you're trying to grow plants like this because a lot of times you'll cut off a lot of this lower stock and really you want to leave the lower stock on outside and you can just clean up the flowers along it because those branches really will come out and grow all the way up to the side of the plant. So stuff like this is really nice in, to me as a, as, a, as a cultivator because the way it naturally grows, it doesn't require an exceptional amount of pinching or pruning. You can leave it in its natural shape and it forms a perfect orb on its own, which gives it really, really high level of sun exposure versus something the hog does too. This looks tight, but it opens up outside. I'll show you an Afghani later and I'll talk more about the differences, about how some of these just don't really give you the coverage if you don't open them up. Where the skunks, if you can keep them clean inside, the natural branching pattern just really gives you a massive sun reflective area. So this is the hog's breath. So that's, this right here is the 88. And this is the hog's breath, same, same era, 88. And this is a tangerine skunk. I brought this one in because this is the, this is the, uh, the progenator to almost all the tangies, all the citrus varietals, all these different uh, orange plants that we used to use a lot in California. And then they became out of vogue. And then with the advent of extraction, they came back into vogue. And then people started to want to smoke citrus again because they were caught up with it in, in concentrate form. And so I got my hands on this one a while back and I've run it outside at the farm and it's beautiful. And I just figured I would throw it into this little skunk projects mix where I just used it as a progenated female, I'll lay a male into it, but I won't mix it with these others. I'm not trying to bring this citrus tone into these bodies. We're going for a little, we're going for different tones in these. But I just figured I'd show you a picture of it. And then this right here is, oh this is the idiot right here. This is, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is the 81 from Ringo, right? So this is the one from Salmon Creek where we've got passed through. And over here, you're looking at the 88. That This is the one that I, I, I like. I got to grow this outside last year and it had stunning, stunning flower development where just rock hard, crystallized, beautiful flowers. So you had an outdoor plant that was absolutely pretty enough to put into a market visually. And it had this exceptionally rich burnt rubber smell that was like dragging your feet on the pavement as a kid. And so the smell was there. The quality of the high was long lasting and powerful. I got lit up for a couple hours off it. And and in a really positive uplifting way too. So it was it was just gorgeous. So this is one of the one of the blocks we want to go into too. And the thing that we haven't showed you prior was um, out of the selection process I did two males. So out of all the seeds I went through looking for a male plant to satisfy it, it took a minute because I was looking for specific smells and, and certain vigor levels. And I found two really interesting ones. And one was more of the thin leaf sativa, or we call it thin leaf drug, a narrow, narrow leaf drug cultivar now. And it has a, a really neat, peppery, spicy, uh, exotic, uh, thought stimulating scent that comes off it when you rub it out. And a much narrower frame, uh, it'd be beautiful open up in the full sun, more willowy, less stout. So, uh, really enticing for me to use it, but it wasn't the profile I was trying to get. It's something that I want to have, but it wasn't my immediate project. This one was the one that was the immediate project. This was the one that when I had an individual come through the space and take a look, it, it, it almost made him wretch when he smelled it. And he said, I don't want to be disrespectful, but that smells almost foul. What was his word for it? Gosh, I'll think of it. But it was something that was just basically disgusting. 
and it's disgusting. That's what we were looking for is that ultra, ultra, ultra loud, nasty, uh, cat pissy, skunk cabbage kind of smell. And this male's carrying a bunch of it. And it had a really nice body on it, open. And uh, you can see it's more of the classic Afghani frame where it looks like an inverted umbrella, so to speak. And these, these, these branches here, you're gonna have to clean up the leaves on the insides and open it up a little bit so that you don't get rot if this was a female. But if I can lay this scent package and some of this oil production into these, then I'll start getting some of that matrix of smell that I want to get back to that was so exotic and highly identifiable. So anyways, that's where the project's at. And sorry I wasn't able to get on it a little bit quicker, but um, we were able to at least see what these look like sitting in the greenhouse. And so that's a natural shape on prune. The 88, the 88, the 88, and the 81. All right.